<coughs> Personally, as a, an international civil servant, I'm obliged to act in the interests of all humankind and not in the interests of one particular interest group, my religion, my nationality. To proclaim that, quote, humanity must now humbly obey the command of heaven, unquote, may all be very well at the church pulpit and in the dedicated rally for the inauguration of a special interest group. At the United Nations, however, it is inappropriate to use the language of religion and politics which divides and alienates. As much as I subscribe to the concept that we are living in the last days and the spirit world is coming down and everything will be different after D-Day, it is inappropriate for me as an international civil servant to impose my faith and beliefs on my colleagues or even indeed to actively solicit support for such concepts insofar as, quote, men and women do not need to confront or contend with each other, for they do not need to imitate the characteristics, dispositions or roles of the other, or to covet those things and take them by force. Instead, by giving what they have to the other, with true love and completing the other, they can become united as a greater whole and share in one another. In the 21st century, women should play a major role in world history, by serving as one of the wheels of the engine, pulling forward the construction of a peaceful world together with men. Going beyond the century of power and technology, women will be the central axis in building the century of love and the peace culture, and their role will be more important than ever before." Unquote. This statement addresses the ideal of the unification movement of true families under God, and addresses the concept from the point of view of women in partnership with men, on a one-to-one -one basis, in an exclusive relationship as a significant other. The language used here is not to be confused with political or media-related terminology, but must be seen in context of the unification principle as taught by Reverend and Mrs. Sun Myung Moon. Quote, I sincerely ask you to walk the path of a true mother the path of a true wife, the path of a true daughter, and the path of a true woman leader who will build the unified world where freedom, peace, and happiness in its truest sense overflows. Let us all walk the path of the true mother, true wife, true daughter, and true woman leader who can construct a unified world overflowing with true freedom, peace, and happiness." Unquote. This is obviously addressed to women unificationists. However, I propose a new thrust to re-educate men and women to address the principle of coexistence, co-prosperity and common cause amongst men and women united in loving families and cooperating on all levels of government and intergovernmental and non-governmental leadership and activity. My work at the International Atomic Energy Agency in the Office of Nuclear Security has led me to understand the nature of international cooperation based on convictions of significant premises and global partnership. Just as individual member states voluntarily commit to the Nuclear Security Fund to finance, training, education, policy, prevention, detection and response to malicious acts involving nuclear or radioactive materials, so I envisage an international body comparable to the IAEA offering guidance, education and training in the principles of peace building based on stable family relationships, on healthy respect of men for women and women for men, on principles of equality and dignity. You can find the speech on the founding of the ABLE UN Women Rally at link in the text the biography of Reverend Moon and other reference materials at the bottom of the text. Thank you.